Alrighty then. This particular question for me was one of those questions where, well, I got it wrong the first time. So that sucked. And also, when I looked at the solution given, uh, it made sense, but to me it wasn't something I could come up with. So that was a problem for me. Um, I like to go about things in a more mathematical way. I like to basically be convinced, I like to show that the actually math plays out the proper way. Okay, that way I'm convinced I have the right answer. So let me show you how I'm going to solve this problem. And honestly, I mean, it is equivalent to what the solution is given, uh, how the solution is given at the SOA website. But again, in my opinion, uh, the way that they deduced their results was not apparent to me. But again, they're doing essentially the same thing without saying it. So let me show you what I did. Uh, this is the setup that I'm giving, okay? This is from all the information they gave me. Okay, so uh, they tell me that the uh, number of accidents, the probability that an insured has zero accidents is 0.8, and that the probability that they have more than one is zero. So immediately, this tells me, because they have to add up to one, that I know something about the probability that n is equal to one. Okay, so from this, I know so far uh, that from this, probability uh, that n is equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.2. That should be apparent. Okay. Um, the deductible is 500. Okay. Uh, the loss amount is the random variable x. Okay. And they give me a distribution. They tell me it's exponential with mean uh, 3,000. So now the, the thing you have to be careful about is that this is a conditional um, distribution. Given an accident, given n, okay, uh, this is my distribution, exponential. X is greater than zero. They don't tell me, but this could be including zero and greater than zero. It doesn't matter, right? All right, I need the 95th percentile of the insurance payout. So let me just first set this up. Let's just write down to first uh, what is the insurance payout, right? Uh, a lot of times I denote this by x sub p, okay? So let me put it over here, actually. Here is the insurance payment, okay? Um, we have a deductible of 500. So that being said, we know that as the insurance company, we pay zero if what? If uh, the loss is less than the deductible. And again, I'm assuming the loss is greater than zero. And then we pay uh, the loss minus the deductible if the loss exceeds the deductible. So if x is greater than 500. All right, all right, definitely going to need that. Now let's write down just the definition, well, just what we're looking for. What is it we're looking for? We're looking for the 95th percentile of the insurance payout. This is my insurance payout. That's what, again, this is what I call uh, the insurance payout. I often use this notation, X sub P. It's just notation I created. I don't really see it anywhere else, but this is what I do, whatever. Doesn't matter. So, 95th percentile of the insurance payout. Remember, if I want the 95th percentile, I need to somehow look at the cumulative distribution. So I'm looking at sort of, I'm thinking the cumulative dis cumulative distribution of the insurance payment, insurance payout. So what I'm looking for here is I want uh, the probability that x sub p is less than or equal to, and I will use. Um, x95. This is kind of conventional notation to denote uh, the 95th percentile, in the pth percentile really. So I'm looking for this. Okay, and this is what we want. I want this. So I'm looking for, again, the 95th percentile 
of the insurance payment. This is how you set up any kind of percentile problem. Uh, so that's what I want. Now, the key is here that I only have a conditional probability uh, distribution function. So how am I going to deal with this? I basically need to use the law of total probability. And this is essentially what they do, but they don't say it. So thank you for that, I suppose, for making things more confusing than they have to be. Typical math, right? Everything's obvious, so why show your work? All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, deal with this. This is basically unconditional. I need to turn it into conditional, because that's what I have, I have conditional. So uh, hopefully you can see that the probability uh, that x uh, p is greater than, uh, less than or equal to uh, x95. Well, um, I need to deal with uh, the insurance payment. The insurance payment is zero, okay? is zero if x is less than 500, and it's x minus 500 if x is greater than 500. So what I can say here is the following. This piece is equal to the probability, the insurance payment, again, is x minus 500. And this is less than x 95, given, given what? Well, we have that either the number of accidents is going to be either 1 or it's going to be 0. So given, uh, I'll first deal with uh, n equals 1. Given n equals 1. Times, okay, now this is where I'm using the law of total probability. Times the probability n is 1. Okay. Now I need to add this to plus. Uh, what else can happen? Well, uh, either n can be 1 or n can be 0. So there's if n is 1, or it's equal to the probability uh, that the insurance payment, which is x, which is the loss minus 500, uh, is less than x95, given uh, the number of accidents are 0 times the probability that the number of accidents are 0. This is what I need to compute. And then we have it. So. This is the key right here. This is the crucial thing. This is the key. If there's anything I've learned, actually, in my opinion, from studying for exam P, which I take on the 12th of January, is that this conditional probability, conditional expectation, conditional distributions in general, are one of the most important things, I think. You need to understand how those work. So uh, this is what I'm getting. And now I obviously need more room. So let's solve this, and we'll be done with it. Uh, so, hopefully this makes sense. I think this is pretty straightforward. If you understand how conditional probabilities work, I think you can see why this makes sense. So, let's just figure out what these probabilities are, and then we'll find our answer. And by the way, by the way, this equals 0.95, right? This all equals 0.95. Right? Because I have my cumulative distribution. I'm looking at the 95th percentile. It equals all this conditional stuff, and that equals 0.95. So let's write that out again. So we have the following. We need to um, basically solve for x95 uh, in the equation. In the equation, okay, uh, is this business. So probability uh, x is uh, less than, it should be less than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than or equal to. I'm going to add the 500. So x95 plus 500 given n is equal to 1 times the probability n is equal to 1, right? Uh, plus probability uh, that x is less than or equal to x95 plus 500, n equals 0, probability n equals 0. I barely fit that in, thank God. Once I compute this, I'm good to go. Let's think about this for a minute, okay? Uh, we have the probability that n equals a number, so that's pretty much taken care of. Um, 
let's just deal with uh, these other parts. So we know this, probably n is 1, this is 0 0.2. We also know this, uh, n is 0, 0 0.8. And uh, we also actually know this, if you think about it, okay, and I don't have the other side, but it equals 0.95, right? The right hand, it's supposed to be an equation. So the right hand side is 0.95. What is this? What is this piece? Think about this for a second. Um, what can you say about the probability that the loss is less than some number plus 500, given that n is zero? This number over here is something positive. So what can you say about the loss being something less than something positive, given that there are no accidents? The loss should be zero. So this is probability one. This is probability one. This number is one here. So um, we have, uh, so which equals, now what, the last piece is this. So given that the n is one, well, this is the loss being less than something, given the n is one. This is a conditional probability, and I have a conditional distribution, right? So this is exactly, this is exactly the integral from, uh, from 0 to x95 plus 500 of my conditional density function, right? 1 over 3,000 e to the negative x over 3,000 dx times the probability that n is 1, probability n is 1 is 0 0.2, plus 1 times 0 0.8 is equal to 0 0.95. So I finally stuck in the 0.95. I have room for it now. Hopefully you can see this is exactly what we have. Everything is just dropping down. Everything is just dropping down, right? This is 1. Uh, this is 0.8, right? Solve this and we're done. So how do I evaluate this integral? Uh, well, if you've seen previous videos I have, then just anything with exponential distribution is one of the easiest things to integrate once you have some practice with it. This is really uh, an easy integral. This is the probability that my random variable x uh, is less than this value. Uh, this is basically the, the CDF. So this is just 1 minus e to the negative x95 plus uh, 500 plus 500 divided by 3,000. Be careful, this negative would technically be distributed there, uh, times 0 0.2. And I'm going to bring the 0.8 over. So this is equal to uh, 0.95 minus 0 0.8, which is 0.15. Okay? Um, we're getting there. We're almost there. So now let's divide by 0.2. Uh, so this is really an arrow, actually, which means, which means now, uh, divide, let's divide by uh, point 0.2, and then let's um, bring the 1 over. So I'm going to do some, maybe some sort of confusing things here, um, but when I divide uh, by point 0.2, I get 0.75, actually. So this is equal to, do some algebra, you get 1 minus 0 0.75 is equal to e to the negative x95 plus 500 divided by 3,000, right? This is looking good, which means that 0 0.25 is equal to, uh, well, actually, let's take ln. We need to take ln. Okay, I want to sort of get to my answer before I run out of room. I need to take ln of both sides. This is 0.25. Take ln of both sides. Multiply by negative 3,000 and then subtract 500. So what I can say here, actually, I'm just going to write what x95 is. x95 is equal to, uh, again, take ln. Okay, so ln of 0 0.25, okay, multiply by negative 3,000. And then I need to subtract 500. This is my answer. And I can't remember what the number is, but I do have it written down somewhere. Okay, so this is my answer, which means uh, x95 is equal to
is equal to 3659 approximately. That is the 95th percentile unconditional of the insurance payment. <coughs> Again, um, I really want you to look at the solution given. Go to the SOA, Society of Actuaries website, uh, for exam P sample questions. This is problem, I think, number 150. I'll label that on the video. I'll look at their solution and compare it with mine. Obviously, we get the same thing, uh, but I guess it's just preference. How do you think as an individual? I think in terms of, again, making the math work out, and then I'm convinced that uh, I know what I'm doing. Like the video, comment, subscribe.